Hello and welcome to Inside the Women of Denver, where we talk to local leaders about their successes, failures, and lessons learned on the journey to success. I'm Crystal Covington, and today I'm talking with Marilee Yorchak, Executive Director of the Digital Analytics Association, a nonprofit that makes analytics professionals more effective and valuable through professional resources and community. Before starting her new role just three months ago, she spent 25 years with the Business Marketing Association of Colorado as their executive director. She's a mentor, a leader, and an all-around awesome woman. Marilee, welcome Thank to the you. show. <laughs> what a nice introduction. <laughs> Thank you. I'm, I'm honored to be here. Well, great. Well, first off, just start telling us a little bit about yourself and what you, what, what you do means to you and how it impacts the world. I mean, everybody has a major impact, and I know that your 25-year history was super impactful. So tell thanks, us a little bit about thanks. it. it. It was. I, I think about all the relationships that I made and the friends I made, some of which are here today. And many, even though it was a professional trade association, so not a nonprofit like, you know, the Red Cross or your church, I, I know we still made an impact in people's professional lives, which if you're happy with your professional life, your personal life is usually pretty good too. So it's good. hard to have a great personal life when your professional life is in turmoil. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's amazing. So you just went through a humongous career transition. I can totally relate. Um, tell us a little bit about what a big change like that means for you, especially after having been in the same place for so long. Yeah. Uh, I was scared, uh, frankly, and I told somebody tonight, I said, uh, if you're not a little bit scared, then maybe that you're not stretching yourself enough. But I think the one thing I'd like to tell people is that don't be afraid to make a change. I, it took me a while to make the change, and I think it was because I was a little bit afraid of what was out there, but I'm so reinforced that I did the right thing. Yeah. That's so huge. I almost feel like we need some applause. <laughs> <laughs> yes, big deal. Making changes, big, big changes. Um, so let's get back a little bit to the history of all of this. So getting into associations, it sounds like your most of your career has been in the association world. So tell me a little bit about how you got started with that. It's something I've not really heard much about. I'm sure there's a lot of people that mm -hmm. wonder how you get into that career field. And it is a great career field, and I would encourage people who are thinking about it to really explore it because there is a lot of opportunities. But like a lot of people, I fell into it by accident. Mm -hmm. I had a, B a BS from University of Colorado in marketing and then an MBA from New Mexico State. And when I was in graduate school, the Direct Marketing Association had a scholarship program, a fellowship. And they had opportunities for 10 graduate students to get this fellowship, which paid for your graduate school, and give you some one-on-one -on -one mentoring with people in direct marketing as well as abilities to look at what the field was about. And the whole point of it was so you would consider going into direct marketing. It was sort of expected, I guess I should say. So I went ahead and took that opportunity and when I graduated, I was married by then, my husband got a job in Denver. So I told them, I'm moving to Denver, introduce me to people in the field. Long story short, I ended up taking my first job at a database company called National Demographics and Lifestyles. It's since been bought by Polk, which was bought by Equifax. But I was there for seven years, and I was on the board of the local trade association, the Rocky Mountain Direct Marketing Association. And I had two children, and so I was gradually cutting back my hours because it was sort of hard to balance yeah. traveling and a 50-hour week job. And when I had the second child, I thought, I can't. I can't do this anymore. I, mm -hmm. I, I need more time for this short period of life when I have children. Mm -hmm. So I left and said to them, if you ever have any freelance work I can do at home, happy to do that. Turns out that someone who worked with me at that company was the president of the Direct Marketing Association. Oh. So she came to me and said, would you work five hours a week for us helping manage our association? I knew nothing about association management, but I said, sure, I have an MBA, I can do anything, right? <laughs> yeah. So I did it, and it, it actually was really fun because I know I'm a people person and involved a lot of 
people-to-people -people contact, and it was pretty easy at first to make a big difference because nobody was doing it before. Everybody was a volunteer, and so their paid job had to come first. Volunteering came second, so when people would say for back then, it was a long time ago, but back then people would leave a message on the phone recording, and maybe someone would call them back a week or 10 days later, which by that time, they were disinterested. So when I came in and I returned calls right away, it was really easy to make a difference and grow the association. Mm -hmm. So the association went from 65 members to over 600 wow. by the time I left. And it, like say, it, the, the first 100 were really easy to get. In the middle of all that, there was another association in town, the Business Marketing Association, who we did a few things with and we did a list trade. And they came to me and said, you should probably work for us five hours a week. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so <laughs> I worked for both of them for a while, which was funny because they had such similar acronyms. But then it was when I thought, this is really what my career path is going to be. I love working in associations. So I think one of the smartest decisions I made was recognizing that I don't know it all. And I need to work with people that are smarter than me who can help me. So. As you will come to find out, there is an association for, for everything. everything. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and there is an association for association executives. <laughs> yes, believe it or not. There's a national association, but there's also a Colorado chapter. It's called Colorado Society of Association Executives. Wow. So I went to it. I started attending meetings. I ended up volunteering. They also have a certification program. And I think that was a turning point in my career, too, yeah. because getting certified in whatever field you're in signifies to people that one, you care about what you're doing, enough to spend your own money and your own time to become proficient at it. Mm -hmm. My board was very supportive of me taking the test and it was really awesome when I passed the test. The ASAE mm -hmm. sent a letter to the president of the association, they asked who you want to send it to, saying your employee did this and only 5% of people that work in associations have this certification. Whoa. So he brought it to a board meeting and said, I think we need to give her a raise. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I encourage any of you who, in whatever field you're in, that if there is a certification, that you think about it and think about taking the effort and the time to become certified because it does signify that you are an expert. Yeah, and that's, uh, that's one of the things that we like to talk about a lot on this show is how people build their expertise and start getting really recognized for what they do. And that certification, I mean. That builds your personal brand. Exactly, and we call it authority. You know, you built that authority. It's like the, the back end of your name. You have these, these letters that say, I am legitimately qualified mm -hmm. and you should choose me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's awesome. And um, so before we started the show, you talked to me a little bit about, you know, a pivotal moment, something that um, was really meaningful in your life and that kind of changed the way that you see your career and some of the things that um, you want. So let's talk a little bit about that. What are, um, t tell us a little bit about that pivotal moment and what it means for you and your career and your future path. I think there's been a couple pivotal moments. One was the one I talked about already when I thought, I just can't do this anymore. I'm, I'm shortchanging myself. I'm shortchanging my family. Who needs me? And someone that was a mentor to me said one time, there's a season in your life for everything. And when I had these little kids, she said, you're in a summer season right now. You need to take a step back. And it's okay to take a step back to spend time on things that are important. When these kids are grown and gone, you can do other things. So I made that pivotal choice then. Mm -hmm. Another pivotal choice was when I was working for both associations, I actually, it, things grew quickly again and I hired somebody to help me. And one day, my seven-year-old, that was my oldest one, came to me and said, Mommy, you don't play with us anymore. Aww. All you do is work. Oh. Oh. I know. <laughs> it, the same day that that happened, I bounced a check, which I never do. I'm a very organized person. <laughs> I got a library notice that I had library book overdue. Oh. It was a cosmic two by four that I had to make some changes. So it was hard, but I made a decision to go with one association instead of two. 
and work on growing that. And I think the other pivotal change when I changed again three months ago was that my association was acquired by another association, a larger one. Mm -hmm. And all the rules changed then. It, it made it just all sorts of new things you have to think about. And I had to decide, is this where I want to spend the last 10 years of my working life? Yeah. If, if I'd only had maybe two or three more years, I probably would have hung it out, I guess. Mm -hmm. But I don't. I was telling Crystal, I have a grandma who's 105. Yes. I know. Woo. She's awesome. She's my role model. And my mom is 80 and still doing great. So my financial planner says, you have to work a long time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so that was, I thought, if I'm going to work for 10 more years, I got to make those 10 years very impactful. Mm -hmm. yes. So my search, I decided about 12 months ago <coughs> that I was going to put myself out there. And I made a very intentional and purposeful job search. The first thing I did was contact the executive director of the Colorado Society of Association Executives because she knows everybody. And I said, I just want you to know I'm looking, this is what I'm looking for. And within three months, she had sent me three really good leads. But I also made a decision that I wasn't gonna go for a little bit of money. It had to be a lot of money yeah. <laughs> because I'm starting over. I have to earn my reputation all over again. I have to work really hard. I also made a decision that I wanted to stay in Denver, so that eliminates some possibilities. I made the decision that I wanted to run a larger association, so I was taking the step up. But most importantly, and this is what I feel like I was very purposeful and intentional about, was I wanted to work for an association that was in a growing field. Mm -hmm. So as you heard, I'm now with the Digital Analytics Association, and if any of you follow employment trends, the top job Huge. for 2016 is data analyst. Yeah. There's 16 programs nationally, master's programs in advanced analytics. Each of those graduates is, has between eight and 10 job offers. Mm. They don't have a problem finding a job. They have a problem deciding which job to take. Mm. Wow. So I knew this would be a great opportunity. And ironically enough, it was not a job that was advertised, um, but it was the president of the association was someone I knew from way back when, mm -hmm. um, who we kept in touch. And I had invited him to be a speaker at our conference and he sat down and talked to me and said, I'm president of Digital Analytics Association. <laughs> That's nice for you. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, we might be looking for an executive director, but I bet you'd never leave your job after 25 years. You love your job. And I did love my job, but I said, we should keep talking. <laughs> <laughs> so four months later and eight interviews later, they offered oh. me the job. Wow. Yeah. That's really cool. <laughs> That's incredible. So within the stories that you shared, there are so many lessons in there. <laughs> <laughs> but what are a few great lessons that you want to make sure that everybody gets from your journey and the things that you've, you've um, experienced in your career? So one is don't be afraid. I think, like I say, I postponed this job search for a little bit because I was afraid of whatever else was out there and I didn't know. Um, to be purposeful and intentional about your job search if you are going to make that change and really think about what is it that I want. I had those four things that were non-negotiable for me and I turned down some other things because of those four things that I really was very emphatic about. Um, don't um, my philosophy of life is be nice to everyone for lots of reasons. It's just the way to be, to be kind. But don't ever think that someone that you meet might not be someone down the road that could help you. We were talking about this earlier that in my previous job, I would spend time helping people that didn't have a job. And I would have people ask me, you know, there's a lot of um, people higher up that you could probably spend your time with better said, Who, who's to say that that person that I'm not helping now, or that I am helping now that doesn't have a job, isn't going to be the CMO uh, somewhere down the line? Exactly. And yeah. it, I think it came back to me in this case of the um, gentleman talking to me about this new opportunity. Came from the woodworks places back in your history you didn't even know they were going to come from. Very true. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nice. Well, thank so, you so much. Yeah. 
you gave some incredible wisdom and Thank you. I'm so glad to know you oh. and <laughs> so thankful there was to my Facebook friend who introduced yes. us. <laughs> Thank you. It was fun. Yeah. This is a great group. This is an amazing group. And those who aren't here, you know, it's it's amazing just to kind of experience the storytelling. And if you can only see, everybody's kind of zooming in <laughs> as you're talking. I mean, you really captured us all. So and thank if any you. of you are interested in being a data analyst or data <laughs> scientist, <laughs> come the lady talk to, to talk to. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Well, thank you so much for spending time with me, Crystal Covington, and my guest, Marilee Yorchak. I appreciate you spending time with us, and I want you to always remember that you deserve to be seen, heard, and known. I'll see you again.